uh, well, I left school at 16, because I was hopeless at school, and I got a job as a greengrocer, which I thought was the best, because I had 14 quid a week. And then someone told me about this thing called art school. So I applied, I got into art school, but of course then I had to stop working as a greengrocer. So I had no money and I wasn't getting any money. So when I arrived, I had 50 quid and then, God bless them, they put me in for a life drawing competition, the Royal Academy Life Drawing Award. I didn't realise. Then suddenly I was handed this whopping cheque of 1,700 quid, which in 1967 was a lot of money. And that saw me through foundation. And then I got into the Royal College of Art, and there was a grant, fantastic, from the government. And I lived on that for a bit, but then it was still broke. So then I started doing art performance, because you need no money to do art performance. And then we became very successful in Europe and America. About 10 years ago, I thought, I'm not doing this crap anymore, being ripped off by dealers and begging for money and all that. You know, so I thought I would retire from the art world like that and do digital work for myself, you know. And I started drawing children's books and things like that. And then one day I thought, maybe Grandpa is a children's book, but he could be a real detective as a toddler finding out bad things. And then I thought of my own family history filled with an awful lot of Thuggerian mishap uh, uh, from when I grew up. And I thought, well, I've had nothing else from them, but I do have a great story. And I thought I would use this sort of narration just to make a good story that made a, a little point at the end that, you know, if you're thinking of killing someone, don't. Not even for fun. Just have a G&T, because it's so much better. Okay, my name is Sherry Stevens, and I've been sewing for many years, and um, I've actually started a new uh, career because I used to work in admin in the university, and I've worked in admin in lots of other jobs, and now I sew, and all using the fabrics I've collected over the years, and I'm just carrying on. I've started a new lease of life as far as I'm concerned. So anybody who wants to do what they want to do, don't wait. That's all I've got to say about that. Um, I love upcycling and using what we've got. I think there is so much waste and unnecessary waste. There's a lot of fabric in this world. Lots of fabric in my home that I need to re use and I haven't used yet lots of um, things are about literally for free in people's homes if they want choose to use them and if they know how to use them and how to um, change them and give them a new lease on, on life or maybe give them the first le lease on life if they've never touched them and they've got garments that have still got the tags on um, so it's good for the planet and it's good for you and you'll feel better because you haven't completely wasted whatever money you've spent and you'll look good what's wrong with that loads of years ago back home in sri lanka i grew up forest there as it's a tropical country it takes many years to mature a tree and when a tree is matured you have to cut it otherwise it perishes Right. So there was a lot of timber, which a lot of it was used to build my house uh, for doors, uh, ceilings, things like that. I, I am a trained, I'm studied sculpture, both in Sri Lanka and then in Prague. So then I, uh, when I was, came to this country uh, to join my partner, uh, I uh, was invited to do some uh, teaching here. So I teach here in Thomas Carlton. Teaching here first, um, um, pottery. Then I went to goldsmiths and uh, trained, uh, had a MA in art psychotherapy.
Many things inspire me. Nature inspires me. People inspire me. Living in life inspires you, know. I am an urban painter and I work in Peckham and I paint mostly Peckham and London and I paint the people in Peckham, the diversity of the folk and the visitors and the excitement on the street and the colour and the way people share the public space. I work in the Bussy building which is a studio complex and I've worked here for over 25 years quite happily and mostly um, I've, my paintings are, are from my journey into work. I start my work from a small um, small situations and observations. I'll see something that inspires me on the street and I'm, I take notes and um, work, work from sketches and photographs and build up a compositional piece. I really like the way that, a lot, that interiors are lit. And I think that I quite like the theatrical aspect of it and it's, it's um, the way that it, it, falls on, it falls on the figures and the grounds and the shadows. I've always been really inspired by the way the way that sunlight or artificial light illuminates a subject. I think it's really powerful and it's a big part of my work. Hi, I'm Michael Petrie. I'm an artist, author and curator. The notion that desire still exists beyond 55 certainly is the focus of my work for this show and that selection of photographs is called I Can't See the Wood for the Trees. A lot of my work is interested in creation myths and this work here, Libation to Apollo, uh, references Greek mythology, uh, which is a creation idea that precedes obviously things like Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and yet is seen now as a myth when really it was a vital religion in its day, which leads us to wonder, will current day religions someday in the future also be seen nothing more than as myths? One of the funny things is that when you're a kid, you can't really imagine your parents having sex. And if you do, you probably don't want to. And yet, of course, adults, are always having sex. And people, if they're lucky enough, continue to have sex all the way till death. Hi, my name is Michelle Baharia and I'm an artist and I've been a practicing artist all my life because I couldn't do anything else. It's that simple. What do I get from art? I enjoy it, I get absorbed by it and um, and I love colour and I think colour really influences our emotions and how we process things. So how we process difficult situations, celebratory situations and I think colour and bringing that together um, can enable you to feel. And I was really interested in the roots of Yeah. So I kind of thought about my own culture. And we all used to get dressed up with her room. Yeah. And she was the queen and we married a Persian king. Yeah. And saved all the Jews, as the story goes. For me, when I go to an art gallery, I want to be able to make, be made to laugh, be made to smile, be made to cry, sometimes be made to get angry. But I like it to provoke me on an emotional level. And I wanted to think about, because when I was a kid, you know, men could get dressed up as women and they'd put on very silly plays about her and it was very funny. People could get drunk, people could have a good time. So I wanted that whole celebration. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I think carnival is, it's that strange thing, isn't it, of celebration and then, yeah. but also hiding. Yeah, There's yeah, a yeah, weirdness yeah. about it with all the marks. And, I'm, I'm dressed quite comfortably, <laughs> yeah. but I like colour, I like to celebrate things and try to bring a bit of joy.